fighting, shouting, screaming. You're the one who was cheating. Give me the control, give me the control, give me the control. So purple, it looks like their faces are bleeding. Dad marches in, I dare breathe for he is seething. What a bomber ass. Take control of yourselves. They stand still, screaming. I'll batter you! Try it, you did. I'm half hiding, trying not to crack up a look at my dad's face. I can feel his angst at my brother's contention. You two get to bed now. Any fighting and you're dead now. It weren't me! You were cheating! No, it wasn't. They start begging dad both together. Please, dad, please, dad. We'll be good, dad. We won't fight, dad. Just one more go each, dad. Just one more go each, dad. Stop repeating what I'm saying. I'm not repeating what you're saying. I was the one dad nicely playing. Ashley isn't being fair. He launches forward, punching Warwick into the chair. A gasp in amazement, captivated in an open mouth stare. I see dad's dreads flying through the air. And I'm dying to burst out laughing. My dad is cussing hard, grabbing them both up by the arms. In a magical moment, he puts Crenton on his knee, bolstering him out the door, didn't even look at me. Ashley was next, screaming like a girl. He was gone with the gentle cuff of one that sought you out twirls. Looking down on me, I look up. He felt like a giant, my dad is six foot. What makes him go so crazy, Dad? I thought they would be glad. I don't like them computer games. They all make stupid noises and look the same. Boys will fight. There is a couple of beggar heads. Say it all, old tis, but. Okay, Dad. In the morning, boarding for our plane, both of my brothers stood in a smouldering look of sad. My dad sucking his teeth, thinking they're bad. I'm all smug, licking dad's shoes. Knowing if I'm good, I'll get to choose. Everything good we get to do. We're off to Jamaica and maybe America too. Us three sit together and right by the window, seven hours in and things and arms go akimbo. They'd say Donkey Kong and till they got really bored, promised faithfully to dad that they would both be fair, split the time equally in two. The battery is going beep, beep, beep. And so I lose my ear. That's right, my ear in the window blind. Within seconds, there were legs in the back of the seat squashing us, hands in hair, fingers scratching faces, people squirming, peering over from in front. I'm starting to wail it and trying not to jump in sheer panic. The pain is horrendous, I cannot stand it. Dad and the has come to the rescue, I'm overwhelmed and feeling confused, my wrecked ears all swollen and bruised. <gasps> Look at what they've done to me, Dad! It hurts! Is it bleeding? They were both pointing over the guy. The look he gave them meant certain death, they were never the same. And nor was I. From now on, they get the blame for everything I ever done. For the whole holiday, four weeks in total, they're both really nice to me. Catching lizards, bogling to dad's tunes, poking crabs on the beach, singing sweet songs and helping me, their big sister, Clock Donkey Kong. Thank you. A Scotty Blue Bell. That's not Our next poet in the semi-final. Is Richard Warren. Richard, come on down, mate. Richard <laughs> told us all about dogging earlier on. Over to you, ready, Rich? All good. Thank you. All yours, mate. My father-in-law recently had his third heart attack. It makes you think, doesn't it? So this is addressed to my heart. Heart, heart. Heart, much taken for granted, tiny friend within your walls of guilty skin, scared and scarred and sacred. Make your paces, pace my floorboards, do not flutter, beat your steady wing, for I still have so much to do. Heart, heart, hammering heart, do not fail me now. Keep on talking, do not murmur, do not stutter, do not skip, stay measured. I still have so much to do. Heart, 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 continually threatened heart within my mouth, miraculous and monstrous muscle with your halting and irregular rhythm. Work with me, dilate your vulnerable vows, you pink and bloody scrub. For both our sakes, don't take a sudden nap. 
for I still have so much to do, so much to do. Heart, 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 don't harden yourself against me. I insist, push on with your hydraulics, tick in fast time, till my breaking heart, you slam the pedal urgently in unforeseen emergency for the first and last time. Meantime, I still have too much to do, too much to do, too much to do. Wait a minute. What if on the day of resurrection, when I have a brand new body, I have a brand new heart? Heart! 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 Brand new and shiny heart, spare and spartan part, familiar and molten, heart of resurrection, curious and ectoplasmic counterpart, my long-awaited second start of spiritualised and vital tissue, unaccountably prepared and beating from uncounted time before my relatively recent issue, come and make our meeting. You will give me much to do. Heart, 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 non-breakable and chromium-plated, full articulate, articulated, flaming, flowing, flowering, transplanting, transmutable, transformed, intransigent and tranny heart. Drum out as only you are able, my eternity's timetable. And further, in your better weather, demonstrate a chicken spring finesse and bring an awesome teenage tenderness to bless our endless time together, you will give me much to do, so much to do, so much to do. That's what you do. Richard Gordon was a previous poem was about our fruit machine fetish theme. Is that a bit tall? There you go. All right. And this poem is a, a true story about a friend of mine who found himself homeless after problems in his life and he'd spend all day picking up cigarette ends, nubs, butts, whatever you call them, off the streets in Wolverhampton, but he still managed to get himself into a bit of trouble. This is Scale's story. Anywhere that people stand or sit or wait, that's always been the ideal place for me to be. Nubs on a plate. But the mobile revolution, that's been poxy, destroyed the nub potential of the telephone box, you see. Where they used to stand, smoke, 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 to make a call, smoke, smoke, smoke. They dropped them all. And sometimes, on the little shelf, there'd be a surprise package from the nicotine elf. Maybe six or eight before a lucky strike, cellophane intact, the whole damn pack. Those were the days, mate, when smoking was great. But for a long while, I have to say, the bottom had dropped out of the ashtray. Times of dejection. But recently, there's been a whole new nub injection. I'm talking about the smoking ban. A gift from God, man, well, the government at least. Now I've said every pub and place of work, around your feet, there on the street, there's a nub feast. Here's a nub, there's a nub, everywhere's a nub. There by the door, nub, nub, nub. Here on the floor, nub, nub, nub. And I'll leave the mini revolution. Thanks for free. Customs and excise duty. Not me. I'm rebelling. I'm revolting. I'm the recyclist's dream. I'm a clean, green, nub-rolling machine. <laughs> Imagine my delight when I find your inch of white. Two's up and my cup runneth over. Here's a nub. There's a nub. Everywhere's a nub, nub. Oh boy. Nub joy. <laughs> Until last week, when I got done, for dropping a nub? <laughs> Dug one, tobacco already gone. Like I told the judge, it's an unfair cop. I'll pick up a thousand nubs for every one that I drop. But she, she thought I was taking a mick. No ifs, no buts, you've committed a crime. But like I told her, there were buts and they weren't mine. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna pay the 80 quid fine. So if you were to give me a couple of quid, just as a sub, I wouldn't buy fags. I'd still pick up me nubs. I'd put your money to better use. I'd pay off me dues. Or buy some more booze. Bottle of Frosty Jacks, perhaps. Not sussed away round the tax on that. <laughs> All yours, mate. This is a love poem. I'm in love with the girl from H&M, my emotions are all in a mess. I met her just after Christmas when returning my daughter's dress. She served me and smiled quite coyly. She almost broke into a grin. Her eyes met mine for a moment, so I reckon that I'm probably in. 
Her figure is curvy and cute. She's pretty and pert and petite. She wears nail varnish on all of her fingers and probably two on her feet. Her luscious locks are golden and flaxen and ever so flowing and fine. They say opposites are attracted and it's true that her hair is fuck all like mine. <laughs> Maybe 30 or 35 would be my best guess at her age. I'm only 36 myself, you know, it says so on my Facebook page, so it must be true. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I, I'm down with the kids. I've got an iPhone on my own bit on Twitter, and the real age gap between us ain't nearly enough to make me look like Gary Glitter. <laughs> so, she asked me what was the problem. My reply took her quite my surprise. I said that I quite liked the colour, but it really wasn't my size. <laughs> Ooh, you are rather large, she countered. <laughs> Turning into Frankie Howard. Ooh, you are rather large, she countered. <laughs> and she laughed just a bit as she spoke. <laughs> and there's one other thing that I've noticed, she said. You look awfully to me like a bloke. You can choose anything that you fancy, she said. And my heart, Mr. Beat. But a straight swap was what was on offer, because I didn't have the receipt. A credit would do it for you, she said, if you want to be out of here quickly. And to be honest, I had no desire to browse through the blouses or to linger in the lingerie. Though I swear that her touch lingered longer than you might normally expect it to be. As she reached tantalisingly across the counter and said, here, give that to me. I did as she bid in an instant and my passion she began to arouse, which might be related to the sneaky peek that I got down the front of her blouse. Her voice... It was dreamy and gorgeous. It fairly made my head swim. She really did sound quite sexy when she said, now please enter your pin. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the sum of it. No more to tell. There was nothing more I could do. Our transaction was done and I had to move on because I'd caused a bit of a queue. Oh yes, I'm in love with the girl from H&M. She's got me ever so excited. But I'm afraid that my deep-seated affection may end up being unrequited. I'm resigned to the fact, if it doesn't work out, I'll have no one else to adore. I shall walk out of here a broken man. Although there's always new look next door. <laughs> Thank you. That's the, um creatures, a poet from Milton Keynes. I don't know if you've ever met the Milton Keynes Poetry Massive, but I'm him. <laughs> I'm just going to a quick poem whilst the judges do it, and I'm doing a show in the Pottery on uh, Sunday between 12 and 1 o'clock. This poem has become a bit of a, a classic, people seem to like it, it's called My Half of the Fridge. Mother, you'll have to move out. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Mark Little.